Hello, guys. I'm here with Caroline Lubier, and this is uh, conversations about lead generation in biotech and why it's difficult for biotech companies, uh, startups, and CROs to generate new clients, to generate new leads. So uh, we'll be talking from a sales perspective, from my perspective, and Caroline is a marketer. So we'll be talking from a marketer's perspective on the same subject. And Caroline, why uh, could you please introduce yourself and tell us what you do? So thank you for inviting me at first. So I, um, I'm Caroline Loubier. Uh, I always wanted to work in health. Um, and so I studied health engineering and ended with a master in project management. I wasn't meant to work in marketing at the beginning, but I discovered marketing as a trainee in a pharmaceutical laboratory. Uh, I discovered a new world full of interesting and various missions. That's how I began. I spent 16 years uh, in laboratories working on cosmetics, medical devices, drugs, and uh, food supplements. And just before the pandemic, I decided to create my own company to propose marketing services to uh, little companies in health. That's how I work now with startup, startups and biotech companies. Oh, cool, cool. I've got quite a similar story. A uh, couple of years before uh, actually lockdowns, I decided I wanted to have my own consulting business. So uh, yeah, and uh, finally, what it came into is I help biotech startups and CROs to do sales side of lead generation. So what Carolyn is doing from marketing perspective, I do as a salesperson, different set of tools, different goals. And when we met on LinkedIn, uh, the reason I wanted to talk to Caroline because she brought up this really interesting topic as like why it's difficult for biotech startups to uh, to generate new leads. And uh, we, we we both, we just had a quick chat and we both agree that the, the starting point for, for biotech companies to generate new clients is uh, their existing network because we all come from profession, professional backgrounds and going to conferences. So when it comes to going to conferences, Caroline just brought up some couple of good ideas on how to get more out of a conference. So uh, what I've seen myself is a client going to a conference, coming back with one lead, like three days at a conference, to traveling there, traveling back, uh, lots of business cards, lots of follow-ups, only one lead out of that. Uh, so, and Caroline has a couple of really good ideas that she just mentioned to me previously, uh, how to get not one lead, but 10 leads. Like, how can you get more out of a conference? So, Caroline, tell us uh, what you were just telling me like five minutes ago. So, um, when you have a Congress, um, you have a before the Congress, during the Congress, and after the Congress. And um, before the Congress is not just paying the 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 inscription you need to prepare all the meetings you will do in uh during the meeting you will screen and scout all the 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 companies that will be relevant for your for your companies such as partnerships or clients or prospects and you really need to uh, set up meetings before this event with interesting companies. And you need to know which companies will be there and which company could be interested by your products or your services. And in this kind of event, you can meet sometimes more than 10 companies per day. And uh, it's really exhausting because it's meetings, 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 meetings. But it's really um, rewarding. And during the event, you need to have a full um, presentation with all the elements that could be uh, helpful for your clients, uh, such as case studies, application notes, and all the things that will highlight your know-how or the company specification. And all this information could be relevant to find new clients. So that's during the meetings. And after you do meetings, you need to do the follow-up. You need to send information to people asking for. You need to fill in your CRM. You need to have a good CRM. 
with all the business cards you collected and setting reminders to contact again the companies, you didn't get any answer after the, after the, the Congress. Do not forget to connect with people on LinkedIn and to invite them also to follow your company. I nice, think nice, 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 nice. Uh, it's a good one. Yeah, uh, so, so uh, to, to, to go back to that story of my client, they actually, they didn't do what you say, preparing for a conference and thinking who is a good prospect. So they just went there and they set up a booth and they were giving away prizes and flyers. Uh, they did a good job of collecting all that information, putting it in their HubSpot CRM, and then we did a follow-up emails with them. Um, but yeah, I think if they prepared and they were more uh, selective with who they want to talk to and spend that time talking. So you say like the, the conference time is really meeting, 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 right? That's how you see it. Not just yeah, standing I... at the booth and giving away flyers. Oh, no, no. Uh, giving flyers today um, could be relevant sometimes, but I don't think it's the best way to communicate because at the end of the day, they all have a, a full of flyers and they put them in the in the dustbin because they don't want to get it. Um, business card, they keep it most of the time, but flyers, um, I did lots of flyers in the past but now no you you really do need to have um a good presentation on ipad or on a tablet or on your computer to present it and after that you can send it to the clients but not staying on the booth waiting for the clients or for customers to to, to go to see you, you need to be proactive before the Congress and to set meetings. Yeah. Awesome. And so so let's move to, let, okay, uh, bring it up. I want to move to another topic, but bring it up the last thing, what you want to say. And sometimes um, some of my clients doesn't uh, don't have any booth. They just went there to have meetings. So they only redressed registered on the congress but they don't have any booths and they have meetings 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 and they have they are going on the booth of other companies that are interesting for them but that's all and it's um a way to spend a little bit less than to have a booth great you're not spending for the booth which is expensive and you also making yourself realize that I am here to go and talk to people. I'm not here to just to stand with, with, with the big flags and say, come to me. So like it's, it's a win-win in terms of saving money and actually getting more, but putting yourself in a position where you have to talk when you're there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So next topic, network, right? We all come into our business from a university, from another company. We know someone uh, but the way I see it is this network has its own limitations. Uh, you only know this many people, and then if they introduce you, fantastic. But if not, that's kind of a bunch of dead ends. Can, how, do you, how do you see networking, and can we get more out of networking, and how can we do network in a congruent value-giving way? Like, any thoughts on that? So... Um... The first thing you need to have is a website. Even if it's a really uh, simple website, you only a page to scroll, you need to have a website. And the other thing is to have a LinkedIn profile for yourself and also a company page for your company. And uh, LinkedIn is now the, the best uh, network for business relation and um, it's essential to have a good profile so you can find on the internet lots of tutorial to uh, how to, go, to to be um, good at uh, at developing your LinkedIn profile but um, you need on this page to explain what is your expertise what is your know-how and what 
are the specificities of your company, why you are different, and more than uh, why you are even better than your neighbor. I know that it's really time consuming to create content on LinkedIn, um, but publication can be done by other people they can help them you can find specialists to help to help you and um you need to use this profile to um put information that will help your clients to solve their problems if you um your services need to solve the problems of your clients and on the pre on the linkedin profile you can put all this information. Uh, you can also use digital, digital research marketplaces, such as scientist.com or in France, we have laboratoire.com also and other platforms exist. And uh, this can be helpful to increase also your visibility. And you can also rely on every communication channels you have. You can. Um, if your office is in a business incubator, they probably can spread relevant information about your company. If you develop partnership with other companies, communicate together and benefit from the network of your partner. It's a win-win system. You can even share the expenses. If you participate in Congress, make some noise about your presence on this Congress. You really need to use all the communication channels you have, and sometimes we forget some, uh, to increase your visibility and to um, extend your network. So pretty much what I hear is just casting a wide net over multiple platforms, multiple communication channels like science exchange scientist.com and the one you mentioned uh and linkedin uh having a website having that visibility having that wide net and that's what you call that kind of network and uh, for that can generate you leads um uh, so I'll, I'll give you guys a little bit different angle because i'm a salesperson i'm not like a net fisher i'm a spear fisher and from the sales angle, uh, this thing uh, is addressed differently. So as salespeople, we actually proactively search companies that are a good fit. So uh, like in biotech, we have two different kinds of groups of people, uh, academics, and we have uh, pharma and biotech clients as clients. So uh, for academics, we can search PubMed, we can search NIH grant publications. For biotech, I always search LinkedIn for companies that are a good fit. But in sales, we proactively find the company and then reach out to that company. So very different approach. Uh, this is where sales and marketing uh, like kind of uh, are very complementary, approaching the same thing from, from very different angles, but still working towards the same result. Now, an interesting thing that you already kind of mentioned, but I also wanted to bring up, is the idea of solving the problem for your client. And uh, there's a lot of uh, people who just like new to selling, new to marketing. They always want to say, hey, I've got this really seriously awesome technology. It's the best thing. I've been working day and night to develop it. But really, it's not about that. The client honestly doesn't care. They're just working on something. They have a problem. They want a solution. They want an instrument. They want a service. Uh, they want their life to be easier and uh, for me, the hard work sometimes, sometimes it's quite clear, but sometimes it's not, is to figure out who needs your product and why they need it and where it fits in that process. Like, Carolyn, tell us, like, what's your thoughts on that? I I totally agree with you. Um, you need to find the pain point uh, of your clients, of your prospects. What makes him um, awake at night and how can you help him to sleep? That's the way. And if you find it, you can help him with your products or your services. And if you find this, this pain point, the 
it's all, 90 percent of the work is done and you have already closed the clients because you will be able to speak with them on the same stage and um, you will have the same vocabulary together and it will work but you need to find even if you are passionate with your product uh, your product is great okay but how can it help how can it help other people all your clients that's the way you need to find to find new clients you know that's that's really a great point and i understand that that's kind of the first step and then you take that information that thought process and put it into the materials that you use to cast your wide net on linkedin and everywhere else uh but based on the understanding of uh, what the problem uh, your your client had. Yes, yeah. that's why you can't have the same communication for all your clients. You need to uh, do a segmentation uh, and to see this type of clients will be interested by this kind of service. This type of clients will be interested by this kind of service and you need to have a different communication to these different targets and you mentioned previously that uh, in our previous conversation that uh, uh, you use a crm and in a crm uh, you create different segments and you yeah. uh, send different kind of messages to different groups of people based on their interests and their problems right yeah, that's it. You can you can send um, relevant emails, which will interest the clients. If you um, if you cut your database in different segments, uh, but if you send the same information to all the clients uh, without knowing what are their problems, you won't have a really good um, return. Yeah. Uh, so the way the way this looks on a sales side is that uh, uh, we create we identify a group of people that we think that have a problem, like say a group of academics, or a group of pharma scientists. We identify usually small groups, twenty or thirty people, and then we send them a cold email. And really, if we identify the problem correctly, and if this group of people has the problem, and we describe it join the conversation in their head about the problem they are really having, then we can get reply rates to like 40%. The record I've seen was 60% reply rate to, to like 20 cold emails to 30 cold emails. But if we miss that point, if we contacted people that do not have a problem, no one or like few knows and that's it. So like having that problem, that's like a cornerstone of, uh, of lead generation of like reaching your clients. Yeah. Cool. All right. So we've been talking for 19 minutes or something like this. For now, any any other thoughts that you might have on this topic right now, Carol? Um, no, I think that we 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 talk about the website, networks, uh, the CRM. And the CRM needs to be updated. If it doesn't, if it's not updated, it's Worth it. It's a uh, it's uh, a waste of time. Um, no, the B two B partnering. And what about ads? Yes, you asked me the question about ads. LinkedIn ads. Interesting. Or... Yes, I think um, it's. I don't deny that ads can be helpful, but before paying to be seen, you need before to develop all the tools that we have talked before to have an efficient campaign. Um, you need to know who you will target with which service or which kind of products to have an efficient campaign. It's the same as emailing or it's the same as cold calling or cold emailing that you, that you told us. Uh, it's a good way, but I think that you can find um, um, uh, some other solution without paying anything, and it will work also. 
So uh, in the first time, don't pay ads. Do a good work on who are your clients, who are the targets, and which kind of service you can propose. Do all the things that uh, you are not paying for. And after that, if you want to go further, you can pay ads. It's really interesting to hear this from you because uh, the other kind of thought process from people who never try ads, they think, why should I do all this work if all I have to do is pay LinkedIn, pay Google, and the clients will come. And in reality, even the marketer, even the person who is actually specializing in something like that, right? I don't know if you've done many, like I've never done a successful ad campaign. And like, I, I'm not even going that way, but a client I started working with, I said, look, if, the same thing, as you said, in order for that, you're either going to spend tons of money and get nothing, or you're going to do the groundwork, identify who your client is, the problem they have, where they hang out. And based on that information, you create an ad campaign that may work before you spend all yeah. that money. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's that's really good topic to bring up. Cool. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, Carolyn, uh, I've heard that you have room for one or two more clients. Where do people find you? What's the best way to reach you? On LinkedIn. On LinkedIn. Awesome. So I'll put um, uh, Carolyn's LinkedIn uh, link, uh, uh, profile link into the video description on YouTube. And uh, you can find me by my name on LinkedIn, or I, I might put even my LinkedIn uh, connection uh, link in the video description. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Carolyn, thanks. It was great talking today. Thank you.